Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about World of Warcraft Classic Season of Mastery, Classic Fresh as it were, to talk about Blizzard's uh, blue post where they're talking about their Season of Mastery design this, uh, intentions part two of two. And just to give my thoughts on this, uh, just my two cents on this uh, subject, because some of it is pretty interesting. So from KVAX, now that we're wrapping up our beta testing phase, we want to follow up on our design intentions, clarify some topics that have come up and answer questions we've seen from beta testers. One notable aspect of our content phases is the decision to make the dungeon set two, also known as tier 0.5 quest lines available at launch. We also adjusted the availability of many dungeons and reputation items, making them available earlier than they did in original World of Warcraft. Most of the changes and additions made to boss loot tables, reputation vendors, and other sources of gear were made later in the original law to fill an obvious gap in late, viable late game pre rate gear or resistance gear. It makes sense with the accelerated content release cadence in Season of Mastery to move these changes up to Phase 1. This will produce more variety, provide more variety and value in the items available as players gear up for late game content. So this is a uh, very welcome to begin with. There are people who are like, oh, classic should have limited items because that's going to make it more difficult. No, make, make the raids more difficult. Don't make it difficult by limiting items because that's honestly pretty horrible. Uh, I've played on multiple servers. Hell, I even played classic. It's never been found to have limited items. There's a reason why Blizzard added a lot of items or the dungeon uh, two set or you know Librams and all that kind of stuff in the original of World of Warcraft or in Burning Crusade or in Wrath or in pretty much every single expansion they added items available uh, earlier on because they were in many cases there were missing pieces or you didn't have a great variety of pieces so it's actually nice to have this and it's going to change the gearing around in a fairly substantial way and it's going to make it better it's going to uh, make it more interesting because We've known for a long time what the best gearing options are. So this is adding variety. It is going to make us more powerful, I think, to a degree. But I'm not expecting night and day differences. But what I do expect is going to be less frustration. Because, oh, I'm not getting a certain item piece, like some shoulders or chest piece or something like that. The one specific item that drops from this one boss in this dungeon and I'm doing it a hundred times and it's not dropping. So hopefully we will avoid m most, if not all of that frustration when we're playing classic fresh seasonal mastery. So that's very, very welcome, but there's more to it as they write here. Darn Maul will be available at the launch of Season of Mastery. It should have been available at the start of classic. They listened to the wrong people, people who didn't know what they were talking about. Oh, but that's what private servers did. Private servers did not necessarily have the best ideas in the world, right? Let's be clear on this. They're working on different scale. There's a lot more people that play classic servers than there are private servers. Different audiences. They shouldn't copy everything. There's some lessons they can learn, but I feel they took some of the wrong lessons with the original release of classic. So it's good to see that. Changes made in patch 1.10 to dungeon rewards will be in place at the launch of Season of Mastery. So idols, librams, totems, as well as the justice drop locations, drop rates of some items such as Hand of Justice and BRD. So I don't have to go in BRD and do it a hundred fucking times to get the Hand of Justice. I'm not going to play a warrior, but I'm sure a lot of rogues and warriors are very, very happy with this change right now because that was, that was such a nightmare. Uh, I, I wonder how Savage Gladiator Chain is going to be, but we'll see, right? You can't have everything. And, you know, Hand of Justice is really important. So having uh, that adjusted drop rate, drop location, so is it going to drop from Emperor? We'll see. Uh, changes and additions made to reputation vendors and item drops in patches 1.6 through 1.11 will be in place at the launch of uh, Season of Mastery with a few exceptions. Items on vendors or that are associated with reputation that are not accessible until the later content phase, so Zandalari Tribe. The world drop plans for Titanic Leggings and Sage Blade will be made available in a later content phase. So they're making an exception there because those items are pretty big, especially tit Titanic Leggings. To facilitate the completion of Dungeon Set 2 quest lines at the launch of Season of Mastery, the Twilight Hammer camps and Syllabus can be used to summon Elemental, Templars, and Dukes. Uh, the other activities will remain unavailable until the AQ war effort. So they're adding some of the stuff with a, uh, that is generally associated with AQ just to allow people to get the dungeon set too, but they're not going to add all of it. So 
you're gonna have people have a reason to actually do uh, to actually get the full set bonus blue set bonus because uh, then you can then you need those items to unlock all the, all of the items from the dungeon set to bonus. Uh, you, you don't necessarily want to use the entire set, but the best items require you to pretty much to get everything up until that point. So you're going to see people grinding for uh, a lot of these items. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see that. Uh, level 50 class quests will be available at the launch of Season of Mastery. We'll see how those quest rewards uh, end up being. I think they've nerfed Diamond Flasks. I believe that's been the case, that they have nerfed Diamond Flasks. Uh, so we'll see how all of that is. But yeah, that's also a welcome development. I, I mean, it makes sense, right? You, you, you want to add as much stuff for people to, to make it as interesting as possible. Because the launch of any expansion or version of WoW is the most important one. And then PvP-wise, Warsong Gulch, Arafi Basin, and Alterai Valley will be available at the launch of Season Mastery. The world PvP objectives in Eastern Playlands will be enabled at the launch of Season of Mastery. What's interesting is they're not talking about honor rewards. They're not talking about honor loot. I assume that they're going to be in, but it would be nice to actually have some kind of official confirmation that... Uh, the, reputa the PvP reputation items are going to be in or not, and whether or not we're going to have, you know, the High Warlord Grand Marshal items from the very start, because that's a pretty big deal, by the way. Then on top of that, the major point, no major class changes. And they talk about classes are the lens for which we view World of Warcraft. For many players, the way our favorite class plays a form uh, forms a large part in the memories we have of a particular era. A big part of what makes WoW Classic special is being able to relive and remaster a gameplay that bygone versions of WoW provided. A large part of the WoW Classic project is being, bringing that back for players to enjoy. We want players to recognize their classes, both their strengths and their limitations, and we don't want to create... A situation where frequent balance changes are necessary and leave players wondering what's happening in their class from week to week. Bug fixes are always possible, of course, but broadly speaking, the classes you know from Classic will be the classes you experience again this season. And I'd say that's a very crucial point. So this season, they're not touching uh, classes, um, but um, they might in the future. So there's always hope. You know, th this is kind of the thing with my frustration, the frustration of quite a few people who class it fresh, we would want for Blizzard to do more. We feel they could do more and they would make it a lot better, but right now it does feel they're making some changes, positive overall changes, uh, but they could do a lot more and making significantly more interesting, whereas right now it feels more like incremental changes uh, to Classic Fresh. So maybe, who knows, Classic Fresh Season of Mastery 2 might be better than this because then they might be only to touch class balance. So I will know some players are interested in seeing a version of Classic as adjustment to core class total kits. That's not our plan for the season. So they mentioned this both times. So I'm thinking they're really considering for the future, not now, but for the future. We've also heard the concerns that have increased health for Bray Boss might further reduce class diversity. This has especially focused on warriors and rogues being better on long fights because they don't run out of mana. We're not insensitive to this concern, but our intention behi behind increasing the health of raid bosses to make up for better indemnization on gear and improved talents probably the my 1.12. We want to make sure players actually stay in combat long enough to engage with boss mechanics and we believe that the changes made to encounters might inspire new strategies for raids. Based on what we saw in Molten Core and Nixia beta testing last week, groups that stacked warriors and rogues seem to struggle more than groups that had a greater diversity of classes. There are a lot of variables, especially given their gear and the fact that we're experiencing fights for the first time, but it gives us hope that we are on the right track. Well, keep an eye on things though. We're open to further adjustment if needed, if it turns out we're mistaken. It's not a goal to exclude any class or play style. Uh, we expect raid content. Ken will be clear with a wide variety of raid comps. This doesn't mean we expect every single spec to fully represent all, at all levels of play. But I do hope it feels familiar while moving at a different pace. So just to m talk about the raiding aspect here, um, they are right. Like I've raided before they introduced the new mechanic changes. I didn't raid with those. I haven't experienced those, but I raided with just double HP. And I can tell you for certainty when it comes to that, that stacking rogues and warriors would be a horrible decision for many guilds to do if, they're, if they want to clear content quickly and efficiently. 
And the reason behind that, at least with the gear in molten core that we had, the consumables we had, and keep in mind we had flasks, so people had a lot more survivability with flask of the titans and smelling. Uh, the reason behind that is, yeah, sure, mana users, mages uh, in particular, would will run out of mana. Mana will be a bigger issue, but so will healers. And guess what? There's a ton of fights, even in molten core where stacking a lot of melee means the raid is taking a significant amount of damage that needs to be healed. Now, if the fights are short, you know, you deal with that, right? You just burst it down to, uh, before it becomes an issue. But if fights are long, then you do have to consider healer mana because it isn't just a case, oh, you know, uh, melee don't need mana, so we bring more of those, so that's not an issue. But healers need mana. They need mana potions, all that. So you have to balance that out. That's a factor. And there were quite a few fights when I was engaged in uh, the beta testing where mana was potentially becoming an issue. And just keep in mind, we had flasks of distilled wisdom, and hopefully they nerfed that, but I do believe we had people using flasks of distilled wisdom as mana potions, which is completely unrealistic, right? We had flasks across the board, M vast majority of guilds are not going to be using that many flasks, right? That you might have on some people, on a tank, on a fairy, on some bosses, absolutely provided by the guild, but for the most part, in many cases, guilds are not going to, vast majority of guilds are not going to mandate flasks. It's certainly not in Molten Corp. And what happens in AQ and next dramas, maybe even in Black Winter, that's a different discussion, but early on, unlikely, unless the prices are cheap, right? Unless they add so many spawns that the prices of flasks are uh, affordable. Then things might change. But we're not gonna have people doing that. So stacking, and this is a point that I might make in a separate video, stacking warriors and rogues does feel like a bad decision. You would still want to have a decent number of them. I'd see, you know, three, four melee groups, and that includes the tanks, the shamans, maybe paladins for devotion aura for the for the tanks. Absolutely, you might have three, four uh, melee tank groups, absolutely, but I, I'm not seeing uh, a situation where you're gonna be running with 20 DPS warriors, for instance. I'm really not, and when I say three, four melee groups, I, I again, I'm talking about like having shamans, a shaman in each group, right? A hunter maybe in each group, something like that for, the, for all those benefits. So it, it would be a bigger variety. It's not like, oh, five melee in each group, no. Uh, you, you're li not likely to see the situation we had in Classic, I feel, at the moment. I think you're going to have more variety, you're going to have a bigger fa caster focus, you're going to need more healers as well. At least that's how I feel right now. A lot of people might disagree, might think, oh, it's going to be really easy. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, then there's a discussion about the PvP honor system. After careful consideration, we increased the rate at which P players rank up in the PvP honor system. Thank God for that one. Uh, because if P PvP rewards are in, Right, uh, it's um, it's it's something a lot of people will care about. So, and it does take a significant amount of time. Um, in one classic, after calculating your expanded range, you would okay. In one classic, the number one ranked player would have an expected honor of sixty-five thousand honor, requiring twelve weeks to reach sixty thousand honor needed to reach rank fourteen. Uh, okay, in season mastery, it's still possible for okay. So they've reduced it. Uh, we're increasing it. Right, after calculating and expecting each week, you would move 20% of the distance between your current rank and your expected rank. We're increasing it to 40%. So they're putting in a 20% buff, or doubling, I guess you would say. Uh, they're increasing it by 20%, so they're doubling the rate at which uh, you're going to rank up by the looks of it. That's good. Um, it's still going to be difficult to get Grand Marshal or Higher Warlord, but it's, it's going to be easier to get, like say, rank 10, 11, all that, uh, much easier to, to get that, much more attractive, especially if you only have like 12 months for all of it. And then a final note, many Clax players have asked what will happen at the end of the season. You'll have the option to permanent OK. Uh, so we'll have, or to an existing classic in OK. So all we don't know, and that is pretty much it. So they'll just give us the ability to transfer our characters to an existing classic era realm uh, until TBC Classic Season of Mastery comes out, I imagine. Or who knows? Uh, who knows what the future holds? And again, I feel that they're making a lot of positive changes with all of this. I think they're moving really in the right direction. Uh, but I would have liked for more. But again, they're... 
a lot of the changes that they've implemented in Classic Fresh Season of Mastery do feel positive. It does feel that they're doing the right decisions overall. And I'm interested in trying it out. Will I play it after, I know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months? I don't know. Like, I don't know how it's going to end up being. I, I am very skeptical in more ways than one, than one. I feel that they're rushing it. I feel that if they had taken a couple of months, if they had, genuinely had taken a couple of months to keep working on this, they would have released it in a far, far better uh, situation that would have uh, created a better community, a better game, instead of what they're doing it right now, <laughs> rushing it in November this year. That's how I feel about it. But overall, positive changes, moving in the right direction, just not the way I would have liked. But hey, what they're doing is good. Keep doing it, Blizzard. Even if you're rushing it, just keep doing going, doing what you're doing right now because you are creating some kind of excitement. Maybe not as much as you would need, but you are moving in the right direction. Costine here signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.